coil packs. One of the banes of the life of the Audi TT Mark I owner. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you safely remove coil packs from the car and also diagnose misfires on your Audi TT Mark I 1.8T engine. So here we are at the business end of the Audi TT Mark I. And I'm holding in my hands an Audi TT Mark I coil pack. However, this isn't for the 1.8T engine. This particular design is for the 3.2 V6, but the removal of the coil pack is essentially the same. And removing coil pack safely is very simple with just a few hand tools. And these include an electrical connection disconnect tool like this, and also a selection of coil pack puller tools like this. Now I say a selection of tools because the 1.8T coil pack puller is actually different to the 3.2 V6. Some reasons you would need to remove the coil packs include a faulty coil pack that is generating a misfire, removing the rocker cover for engine work, or changing the spark plugs at service intervals. Jobs that you might be undertaking yourself if you are maintaining the car at home. Now it's worth pointing out when removing the coil pack, you must make sure there's no debris at the top of the engine that could fall down the hole. The last thing you want is any rubbish going down to where your spark plug is. So make sure it's nice and clear at the top. So the first thing we're going to do, if you've got plastic on the top of your engine like I have from the factory, we need to remove the engine cover. So let's do that first. So that's very simple. Take a flat bladed screwdriver and turn the two plastic lugs at the front quarter turn clockwise or anti-clockwise to unlock them and they look like that and that'll allow you to lift the front of the cover up and it's hooked on to the back of the engine just here the cover's got a clip that you hook under here and here and they will slot back onto the engine when you put it back but now we can see where the coil packs are so by doing that we've got a vision of cylinder one and cylinder two coil packs right here and here. And we can see the electrical connections just at the back of that for disconnecting them. Now coil pack three is just here and that is under your N249 valve, which is just here with the silver stick on the top. And further over, you've also got cylinder four, which is just located here. However, when the engine is firing, it has a certain firing sequence and that goes cylinder one, cylinder three, cylinder four, and then cylinder two last. So remember that sequence, one, three, four, two. Apparently that applies to all the VAG four cylinder engines. So we'll take it in this instance that there's a fault on coil pack one. So we're going to disconnect the electrical connector and then try and remove the coil pack from the engine. So here we go, coil pack number one. So I'm gonna take my electrical connection tool Put it over the clip at the back, push it back like that, and you hear that click as it pops out. That should now allow me to wiggle that plug backwards and disconnect coil pack one, just like that, from the coil pack. Easy as that. Now, I'm not gonna start the engine, but I have disconnected it. And again, I'm making sure there's nothing around the coil pack. I'm gonna give it a bit of a blow. <laughs> To make sure there's no dust or anything around that before I try and remove it. Next up we're going to slide our coil pack removal tool over the top of the coil pack and engage with the grooves to get a firm grip. This is the tool that you use for the 1.8T model and this slightly different design for the 3.2 V6. Now this is just slides on into the grooves over the coil pack like so and I should now just put a bit of upwards pressure on this and it should just come out nice, straight up. You want the pressure to come straight up. Like that, pop, actually pops. Easy as that. And you wanna make sure as you remove the coil pack, it comes out nice and straight. Now looking at this coil pack, wow, this looks really clean. So we'll take a closer look at this coil pack and it does look like it's hardly been used. It even looks nice and clean down inside it. Now I know this is actually a good coil pack and again, I've just literally slid this tool over the back of the coil pack, put some upwards pressure on to remove it from the cylinder. So let's go about refitting this plug 
into place and make sure we get a nice clean fit. Now you don't need the tool for refitting it, I need to remove it. And we know that this needs to go straight down onto the spark plug. So I'm going to lower it into place just to get it below this lip before we start manoeuvre it into place. As we lower it down, you'll notice you can feel it almost like find its place into the hole where it needs to go. And once you get it into this position and it's not home yet, make sure the electrical connector's out of the way at the back of it. And just put some gentle pressure in the middle to force it home and it will just pop into place. You'll feel it pop into place once it's there. And you'll know it's all the way home when this plastic notch here hits the top of the cylinder head. Once it is, take the electrical connector, the back, slide it forward and wait for the click. Ready? Perfect. So we know how to change coil packs and remove coil packs, but what about testing coil packs? Well, we're gonna cover that now. We're gonna test it on coil pack one. And my plan or my diagnosis is going to be I'm gonna start the engine and make sure we've got no engine management lights. Once I've done that, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna unplug this coil pack from the engine. And I think we'll hear the revs drop because the engine will then essentially be running on three cylinders rather than four. So that audible note should tell us the coil pack is disconnected. At that point, I'm hoping one of two things is gonna happen. One, we're gonna get an engine management light pop on the dashboard and tell us we've got a problem, or at least if I scan the car for codes with an OBD2 reader, we're gonna get an error on my phone linked to the OBD2 reader that's gonna tell us we've got a problem and where the problem is. So let's try that first. So let's start the engine. Started. And if we take a look at the dash, we've got no engine management light, which is a good thing. And the revs are sitting nice and stable just below a thousand revs. So we're probably at about 900 revs here. Now we take a look at the diagnostics on the phone. And when I've read the codes, as well as there being no engine management light, there's also no codes coming up on the phone. So that's good. We know the car is fine right now. So I'm gonna unplug coil pack one. Okay, as soon as I've done that, I don't know if you heard that, we definitely lost a few revs there and the engine spluttered a bit. The car is visibly shaking now, the engine is shaking. So let's take a look in the dash. And you can also see the revs are unable to stay constant. They are trying to get up to 900, but they're probably about 850 to 800 and they do fluctuate quite a bit. Interestingly, there's still no engine management light on the dash. But that doesn't mean that we don't have an engine fault code on OBD2. So I'm now going to scan the car with my OBD2 reader and my phone once more. There we go. We can see straight off the bat. So let's take a closer look at the engine codes that have just popped up. There's actually two of them. P0351 ignition coil A, primary secondary circuit malfunction, ignition coil 1. Well we know that, we've unplugged it and also it's detecting a P0301 which is a cylinder one misfire detected. So that's good, it also knows there's a misfire and just as I thought it was able to tell me what cylinder the problem's on. Now that would work the same no matter if it was cylinder two, three or four and if we remember that looking at the car on the driver's side in the UK as, as we look at the engine from the front that would be on our left that it's cylinder one, two, three, four, across to the right hand side as we look at it towards the passenger side. So that is how I would diagnose any faults with my coil packs on an Audi TT Mark 1. There you have it, a very simple tutorial on how to remove coil packs with just a coil pack removal tool and an electrical disconnector tool. Hopefully you found this video useful today and if you have, then please do give this video a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel if you've not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of content on the Audi TT Mark 1. As always, thanks for watching, see you soon. Take care.